Meet Tim Lenton, Earth Systems Scientist. Also somebody whose name is associated with the Gaia Hypothesis. He's at the University of Exeter, a very nice guy, likes to smile. He's written a couple of books at least. This is a very nice book, Revolutions That Made the Earth, all about the history of Earth, life on Earth, and also Earth System Science. It's kind of like a new science in which you include biology with geology. Let's hear what Tim has to say about Are We Alone? I'm a professor in Earth System Science. And are we alone in the universe? Uh, as complex thinking beings, we might be very rare in the universe. Are we alone? Possibly. How about the life on Earth? Is the life on Earth alone in the universe? No, there's, I suspect, a massive amount of uh, life in the universe, but it would be what we might call simpler forms. And do you, think that it, do you think it's inevitable that simpler forms evolve into what you would call, would you say, complex forms? Um, complex self-aware life forms, at least in the case of the Earth, it was spectacularly difficult to get as far as us. And that's why I think that, that complex life or certainly self-aware life is, is pretty rare in the universe. Well, what do we know about how life got started on this planet? Uh, we just know, well, we know that it started remarkably quickly in the sense that well, we're fairly confident it was definitely here within 50 million years of the end of the so-called late heavy bombardment, which might have been not, which is Earth getting pummeled by, and the Moon, and the inner solar system getting pummeled by large rocks, uh, which ends about 3.9 billion years ago, and those rocks probably would have evaporated large parts of the early ocean. As soon as that's over, you know, in a geological blink of an eye, we've got sedimentary rocks with evidence of life in them, albeit chemical evidence. And now there's suggestions for evidence of life before the bombardment. So all of that is adding up to say starting life is not that difficult in the one, in the sample size of one that we know of. Your name is associated with the Gaia hypothesis. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> the Gaia hypothesis is, uh, is the postulate that Earth and the non-living parts of our planet form a self-regulating system that maintains broadly habitable conditions for life. Um, I've become the kind of younger champion of the idea that originates with Jim Lovelock and Lynn Margul the late Lynn Margulis. Um, that's, for me, perhaps the boldest and most exciting hypothesis about how our planet functions and, and why we're here in, in some sense. It's had much, much resistance in the scientific community from many quarters, particularly evolutionary thinkers who make some rightful objections to, theoretically, to how on earth could such a, a thing have come about. And some of us, myself included, are still trying to work on understanding how, how can self-regulation at the planetary scale um, emerge in some statistically somewhat probable sense when you have life evolving on a planet. And we've got some answers, but I don't think we've got the whole theory. 